Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Today, I am excited to share a dish with you because I polled you. Well, maybe you saw the poll. Uh, and I asked what people wanted to see the next recipe to be, whether it be chicken, meat, a soup or a stew, or a bean dish. And in the order that those ranked in terms of popularity, they were all very popular, um, I decided I'll do one starting with the most popular. So this week, the winner, 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 chicken dinner. Now, what dish to make? I wanted to do something, it's January, I like to slim down a little bit during this time of year, um, and I wanted to take a recipe from my lighter step-by-step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, it's my second book, and give you one of my favorite chicken dishes ever. No, literally, it's Jeffrey's favorite chicken. Like, I'm not kidding. It's one of my favorite chicken dishes ever. And it's, it, it, it's like something that is so delicious that it's loaded with goodness. It has mushrooms, it has spinach, it has artichoke hearts, it has sun-dried tomatoes, and it's in this really wonderful lemon wine sauce. Uh, there is no cheese in this dish. Uh, you can get rid of the dairy completely if you want. Those things are all gonna be written in the recipe card and I'll explain it in the video. But it's gonna look pretty much something like this when it's done. Um, you're gonna wanna see for yourselves how delicious eating light can be and you're gonna just, the proof is in the making. So I'm gonna go right to the Instant Pot and make my favorite chicken. Let's do it. So the very first thing we wanna do here is we want to line up our chicken into three positions here. Our chicken cutlets, I'm using between one and a half to two pounds, either is fine in that range. Uh, and chicken cutlets, by the way, are chicken breasts that are sliced to about a quarter of an inch thick. You see that? That's perfect. They're gonna cook juicily and wonderfully that way. That's all the way on the left. The center plate is going to be our dredging or coating plate. On this, I have all-purpose flour. However, you can absolutely use lighter alternatives such as whole wheat flour, coconut flour, or quinoa flour. And if you use coconut flour, that's gonna to totally work and keep this dish keto and paleo, by the way. And you can, it's totally up to you. You can, like I said, you can use all purpose I am as well. And I like to season this up a little bit by just adding like a little sprinkle of some garlic powder, black pepper, and some kosher salt, or you can use seasoned salt. And I'm just gonna swirl that around with a fork on this plate. Becomes nice and artistic now. This is the fun part. And then I'm going to take each piece of chicken or each chicken cutlet, and I'm going to dredge and just press it in my flour mixture on both sides. Make sure it's fully coated with a nice light dusting. And you see this? This is perfect. When it looks like that, we're gonna just set it aside on this plate all the way on the right, the third plate. And that's our little assembly line here. Super easy, repeat until it's all done. And by the way, I use a quarter of a cup of the flour for this, but if you feel like you're running low after you're dredging, just add a little bit more, no big deal. Or as Linda Richmond would say, no big whoop. I was called that, by the way, by Rachel Ray's husband when I was on Rachel Ray's show during the Halloween episode a few years ago. He's like, I got Linda Richmond over here when he heard me talking. And then I waved my magic wand and I said, Verklemptis! And it was pretty great. Okay, okay, and there we have it. All of my chicken, nice and dredged, aka coated, with that flour mixture, however you want that flour mixture to be. By the way, I don't recommend using almond flour for this because it doesn't really cling to the chicken very well and it kind of just becomes a mess at the bottom of the pot when we saute it, which is about to happen. So use either all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, coconut flour, or quinoa flour. Those are your best bets. All right, moving on. Okay, to the Instant Pot, we're gonna begin by adding a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil and about one teaspoon, or you could even get away with a half a tablespoon of some salted butter. You don't have to add the butter if you wanna keep it dairy-free. I just like to add a little bit for some slickness. You could also use ghee, which is clarified butter, and would actually keep it paleo in that sense because it has all the milk solids burned off when you make ghee, it's clarified butter. Uh, again, you don't have to add it though if you don't want. It just gives it a little extra oomph. We're gonna give that pot some heat and let everything get heated up. So we wanna come down to the control panel and we wanna hit the saute button and make sure that we're on the more of the high setting. If you have a start button, hit that. And that's gonna give the pot some heat and then we're gonna let it heat up for about three minutes until that oil is shimmering and the butter is melted. And then in batches, I am going to add in my chicken cutlets that have been dredged. You probably fit up to two or three at a time in there, depending on how large. And we're going to just give those a quick little pan sear for about a minute on each side. And give it a little flip. A 
All right, then I'm just going to take my chicken out of the pot and lay it on a plate. And this is looking good. This is perfect. You don't need it to get too much darker than that. That is perfect. And then we'll just repeat the process for the rest of our chicken. And here is all of my chicken. Slightly seared, lightly brown. This is exactly how it should look. Perfect. Moving on. If you're opting in to use some butter or ghee, add another teaspoon to one and a half teaspoons. And by the way, one and a half teaspoons is a half a tablespoon. But you don't have to add it. There should still be enough olive oil in the pot. And after I add the butter and it begins to quickly melt, look at that, right in the spotlight. I'm going to add in two large shallots that I've diced up. By the way, you can just use one medium yellow onion if you only can find that, or if you just have that lying around, that's fine. As well as eight ounces of sliced mushrooms, be it white button mushrooms or baby bella mushrooms. Either one's fine. I typically like to cook with baby bella mushrooms, but these are white mushrooms, and they were on sale, so I went with them. Why not? And now I'm going to saute the mushrooms and shallot in the olive oil and a little bit of that butter there. And as I do, I'm going to scrape up any of the browned bits that we have from the flour when we were searing our chicken in the pot. I'm going to do this for about two minutes to saute the mushroom and the shallot. And after about two minutes of sauteing the mushrooms in the shallot, I'm going to add in six cloves or two tablespoons of crushed or minced garlic. Give that a saute for another minute. And you'll see, as the mushrooms especially begin to cook down, they really like to sweat and become nice and like buttery almost themselves. So that creates an easy way to begin to deglaze any brown bits stuck to the bottom of the pot. But don't worry, any of that browning that's not coming up so easily, although what really does after you're sauteing with the mushrooms, is really about to come up. Because now I'm going to add to the pot the juice of half a lemon, as well as a half a cup of a dry white wine, a dry white wine, I should say, such as Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc. If you don't do wine, that's just fine. You can just use a half a cup of broth. We're gonna add a little bit more broth after, but you can just use a half a cup of a chicken broth instead. And now we really wanna deglaze the bottom of the pot. Make sure it's all smooth, no brown bits on there, so we have no issues coming to pressure. And by the way, if you don't like mushrooms, if those aren't your thing, you can leave them out. Don't worry, because we are deglazing regardless here. We're going to allow that to simmer for two minutes. It smells so good. Mmm, we've now created this base for this wonderful lemon wine sauce, and it's going to be amazing. All right, so after two minutes, what I want to do is I want to add in a half a cup of chicken broth. I'm using reduced sodium. Um, of course, like I said, if you didn't add the wine, you can just add a whole cup of broth. Add a half a cup in place of the wine, and then a half a cup now. As well as one tablespoon each of seasoned salt and Italian seasoning. We'll give that a stir, make sure everything's nice and combined. Now we're going to return our seared chicken to the pot. Looking good. Any drippings, feel free to let those go into the pot as well. And we're going to top it off with about five to eight ounces of baby spinach. I love spinach. Now it might seem like there's a lot going on in this pot now with the spinach in there, but it cooks down into absolutely nothing. That is fine. Okay, we're ready to pressure cook. Pretty simple. I'm going to now put my lid on top of the pot, secure it, make sure that it's in the sealing position. Now we're going to hit the cancel button and we're going to pressure cook. Let's go to pressure cook here or manual depending on your model. It will either say pressure cook or manual. All the newer models say pressure cook though. It's kind of old school. If you have one of the ones that say manual, I almost feel like you have like a, a, a special item on your hands because those are the original models. We're going to go for five minutes. That's it at high pressure and then hit start. If your model has it, if it doesn't, after a few moments of doing nothing, that's going to go right into the mode itself. So while the chicken's cooking, I want to create my cornstarch slurry, which will always turn any sauce, which will be pretty thin after pressure cooking, because remember, it has to be thin enough to come to pressure, into a perfectly thick consistency. And I'm going to use one tablespoon of cornstarch, or you can use our root powder, by the way as well as one tablespoon of water, equal parts, and I'm gonna mix them together until it goes from a thicker consistency to a nice and smooth one. This is truly magic, how this thickens pretty much any sauce into a fabulous gravy. And when the pin drops, that means the lid is now secure to open, and all the pressure's been released. You see, I told you all the spinach would cook down. So what I wanna do now is I wanna just like move the spinach off the chicken, it's okay if some of it comes out, that's fine. 
and then just place our chicken in a serving dish. I totally don't have a serving dish right here because I realize all of them are like in storage from when I did the last shoot. So I'm using like a glass pie dish. That'll work. Why not? A little serving platter. Beautiful. There's all my chicken. And now we're going to return to this pot and turn it into my favorite sauce. All right, hit the cancel button again. And now hit that saute button again. And again, hit start if your model has one. If it doesn't, it'll go right into the mode on its own. When the sauce is bubbling, I want to take that cornstarch slurry and I'm going to add it and it's going to thicken up beautifully, almost instantly. I want this to be a nice thick sauce. And then I'm going to add in a quarter of a cup of, you can use any milk, you can use milk, heavy cream, half and half, or you can use a non-dairy milk such as almond milk, cashew milk, oat milk, soy milk. Just make sure it's also unsweetened. We don't want like a weird flavored milk in there. And lastly, for my finishing touch here, I'm going to add in a 14 ounce can of artichoke hearts that I've just like ripped up by hand, as well as around a 10 ounce jar of sun-dried tomatoes, which I've also just chopped up. Or you can also get them sometimes already julienne, which is recommended. If you get a little bit of the oil that's in there, that's fine too. It'll just create richer flavor and give that sauce a good stir. And then we're going to kill the heat. And you're going to see this unbelievable thick, rich, yet light lemon wine sauce loaded with sun-dried tomatoes and artichokes and mushrooms. Again, if you don't like artichokes, mushrooms, or anything like that, that's okay. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to add them. But this is what makes it my favorite chicken. Okay, now we're going to ladle this sauce over the chicken. Okay, you ready for this? Look at this. I'm not even a lefty, but I'm trying to make the light work out here. Mmm, look at this. I like to spread the sauce over the chicken so everything gets covered and you can use as much sauce as you want on this it's totally up to you but this is jeffrey's favorite chicken and i'm gonna plate some up and there my friends is some delicious plated <laughs> jeffrey's favorite chicken look at that two cutlets loaded with the good stuff i can't wait to try it out let's do it okay my friends and there it is my uh my favorite chicken <laughs> jeffrey's favorite chicken it feels weird talking in like the third person so i'll just say my favorite chicken okay here we go i can cut this by the way with just the fork the chicken it's that tender i don't need a knife and i'm gonna get some of the goodies on there some sun-dried tomatoes some artichokes some of the sauce mushroom here we go all right this tastes like one of your favorite home cooked meals. It has that home cooked meal flavor to it, yet it also is something I feel like you'd find at a place like the Cheesecake Factory, yet it's really on the lighter side of this dish because, again, there's no like heavy cream or uh, you could add, like, like I said, if, if you're in keto, that's fine. But there's no like heavy cheese products in this. There's no cheese at all in this dish. Of course, if you wanted to add a little bit, you could add some Parmesan at the end, that's up to you. Um, we have the option of using a whole wheat flour, quinoa flour, or a coconut flour in place of all-purpose flour. Um, and like I said, like a non-dairy milk can be used at the end, or we can use ghee, or instead of butter at the beginning, or just leave that out. It's up to you. You can make this totally customizable, as pretty much all my recipes are, but the flavors in here are really, really delicious. So like next level good, and the sauce is just to die for delicious. It'll go great over rice, quinoa, whatever. Mmm, the chicken is super tender. I don't like dry chicken. That's why sometimes I'm hesitant about breasts. That's why cutlets work so nicely in the pot. Mmm. Oh, I gotta have Richard try this out. Richard, try this out. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. All right, Richard, I'm gonna give Richard a piece um, and I'll just, you know, feed it to him. And there you go. Mm. What do you think? Oh my gosh. It's like, it has like a fresh garden feel. It feels, there you go. You know, like full of vegetables and, you know, but rich at the same time. Artichokes, mushrooms, sun dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes and spinach. Those are like four of my favorite things. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's, they go together very well. They really do. Um, Mmm. Mmm. It's like melts in your mouth. It's really, really good. Really good. And again, this is something you, when you were eating it, you actually feel like, wow, I'm eating something light, but it also has so much flavor in it. Mm. Like, it's delicious. It's super satisfying, and it'll fill you up. Great alternative to something that's a little heavier if you're trying to slim down a little bit. Like I am. <laughs> so, all right, you want the rest of that? Yeah. All right, he'll take the rest. 
So my friends, in case you didn't know, I am the author of some cookbooks. This one, by the way, is, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, from my Lighter Blue book, which is my second book, which came out in April of 2021, right when the world was still going through the pandemic pretty intensely. But I also have three other books. I do. I have the original book, which preceded this book. It came out in April of 2020, really when the pandemic began. The Orange Book, my original, which is the number one best-selling debut cookbook of all of 2020, not just Instant Pot, but talking every genre, which is surreal that it has that distinction. Uh, and also, the one that came out after the blue one is my yellow Simple Comforts book. You don't want to miss that. And the one that's coming out this April, this year, 2023, is my new book, my green one, Super Shortcut Instant Pot. It looks really glossy right now because this is actually what they call a galley. This is what they, it's actually not the official book. It's what they send out to people ahead of time so they can like review the book, look at the book. I, it's almost a little embarrassing for me because there, is, there are things that didn't get changed before, before the final copy went to print. So this is not even really the final, but it's just a, a, basically a, a copy I can, I can show you. It makes it look like the physical book. Comes out in April though. Um, and I can't wait for this one. It's my easiest, quickest cookbook ever. You're definitely gonna want this book for sure. Trust me on that. Quickest and easiest. And they're all easy. Thank you again for watching. Check me out at facebook.com slash pressurelovecooking. Make sure you like that page to see any time I drop a new recipe. Deals. I always share great deals. You don't want to miss those. And sometimes just some humor. Why not? Showing me shoveling a driveway looking miserable. And uh, at Pressure Low Cooking on all the other socials. Thank you so much again, my friends. And the next time you're looking for a dish where you're going to be taking your fingers and do some licking, you're going to want to make some of Jeffrey's favorite chicken. Enjoy. Mmm. So good.